Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jennifer and in today's tutorial we're going to start this awesome Feltworks uh, stocking um, kit. It's by Dimensions and it has all of the same um, similar products as a Bucilla kit, but it's not Bucilla. So I think this is going to be interesting. I haven't I honestly didn't know that Dimensions made kits like this. So this is my very first one, and I'm excited to uh, look and see what's inside this kit. Um, so far, I'm liking the packaging, and all the beads have their own little Ziploc bags, which I love. If Bucilla did that, that'd be awesome. <laughs> and there's more colors and sequins and things. Sorry, my son wanted my attention and uh i just i love these little bags those are so handy and if you've ever done a dimensions kit they're usually known for their cross stitches and i've done several of their cross stitch projects and um they they do this with their cross stitches too they um so they pre-sort all of your threads so you have no doubt uh what color they are and they even have the um the numbers to go with them so if you accidentally run out you know exactly what color to get so i absolutely love this so that just like saves a step it's already pre-sorted for you here is all the felt uh the felt is pretty good quality um the stamp coloring is interesting it's got like a green hue on the pink which is interesting so some of it's white stamps, some of it's pink, um, and some of it's blue. So if you look at the white, it's blue, which honestly, I think it's a little bit hard to see, not going to lie. And if you notice, the white is a little on the thin side, which I thought was interesting too. Usually white felt is actually on the thicker side, but on this kit, it's a little bit thinner. Okay, so now we're diving into the instructions, and let me move this out of the way. So the instructions are pretty great. Um, it kind of has this booklet form. It's got like a welcome and it has all the threads, colors, and how many you have. And it kind of gives you a step-by-step -step, uh, instruction from the beginning. And it gives you a good an example of how to read the booklet. So here are the needles tucked away. So I'm gonna grab those. And there's the alphabet that we'll be using later on. And let's see what else is here. Oh, on the back, um, we've got the stitch diagrams. So it tells you applique, satin, stem. Um, yeah, pretty good. I mean, I think these are really great visuals. It even shows you how to make a pom-pom. French knot. Awesome. Okay, so now we're diving into the instructions, and every single instruction has a picture, which I think is really neat, especially if you've never made a stocking before, or if you've never made any type of craft. If you're not crafty at all, these are great visuals. Well done, Dimensions. I'm impressed. <laughs> so it tells you step by step what to do and it gives you a great visual which I love and it gives you arrows to tell you what step is next. This stocking is fairly simple and perfect for beginners. So let's see. There aren't very many steps it looks like. One, two, three, four, five, six. Look at these instructions and how clear and concise they are. Very great. This is a much better alternative than written instructions. I can't tell you how many times people have asked me about the written instructions in Basilicates because it just, it gets overwhelming so quickly. But uh, there's my daughter. <laughs> she wants to go outside and play. So um, this is this is fabulous. I I love the visuals here. This is great. And oh my gosh, this is the end. Yeah, that is so quick. Did you see that? There's only like four pages of instructions, and they're all clearly marked. And um, you have all the steps marked out. Very awesome. 
Okay, that's literally it. Um, there is another one that has different languages. Um, I don't know what all it comes with for the language part. But there you go, there you have it. We'll be using English, because <laughs> that's what I speak. So we're just gonna, that's so, cr that's so great. The, the, the dimensions kits for cross stitch come like this too. So if you've ever, ever done one, they're very similar in design, so it's great. Um, versus, you know, I, I do um, have extra thread holders for when I use the colors. So you'll also need some um, fiber fill my huge bag of fiber fill. If you buy one of these bags at like Walmart, they're like six bucks and they last forever. Nice and fluffy. I know some people like the, I don't remember what it's called. It's like snow dust or something like that. I don't know what it's called, but it really, honestly, I'm not too picky. And you'll need some scissors. Pretty basic, honestly. And um, I just grabbed some bags for the sequins. So usually I use bags, but these already have bags. Bam. I love it. I love that these have bags. <laughs> it's perfect. All right. So we are going to, um, I'm going to set this aside and we're going to cut out the first step. Okay. So here is the front and the back of the stocking. And I'm going to go ahead and cut these out. And I'm going to set the backing aside and um, I'm going to use the backing as a template for the lining and I'll show you that real quick. So I buy separate felt from Joann's in bolts. It's a 100% polyester white felt uh, on a bolt and I buy them by the yard and I just cut a piece and use that as a lining for the inside of all of my stockings. I know a lot of people like to use uh, cotton lining to kind of, you know, have fun with it and, um, you know, trying to get matching, matching themes or whatever. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> I honestly, the, the white felt is just neutral and the purpose is to cover all of the knots and the stitches in the back so that when you put stuff in, you're not accidentally, you know, um, snagging a stitch or, uh, whatever. So it's, it's, that's basically its purpose. So if you buy a kit from me, the, all, all of my stockings are lined. So, um, you'll see that white felt inside the stocking. And if you want to add a personalized lining yourself, you can totally do that. So right now I'm just writing out the name that's going on the stocking and I like to use tissue paper. Tissue paper, you can buy this at the dollar store and it is um, transparent so you can easily um, draw the names from the, so I like to use lined paper to make sure it's straight and then um, put the tissue paper on top and trace the name, which is what I'm doing right now. And I like tissue paper also because it's thin enough to see through, but it's, um, it's thick enough to sew through. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm able to um, sew through it without it tearing a whole bunch. And, um, and then I can use tweezers and take the rest of it off. So this is going to a family member. And I used the um, alphabet that came with the stocking. You don't have to do that, but I like to do it just to give it its own personal touch because the dimensions, I've never done one. So I wanted to include the font, which I kind of like the font. It's kind of, it's big and bold and it's different. So once you're done putting the name on the tissue paper, uh, you're gonna cut it out and place it where you want it. So um, the name goes on top right here and we're just going to place some pins and it tells you the type of stitch that you're doing. So we're doing a stem stitch, which I've, uh, I've done one in the past. It's been a long time since I've done the stem stitch. 
basically, I'll show you how to do it, but um, the stem stitch is like an upside down outline stitch, if that makes any sense. <laughs> So I'll show you what I mean. Um, this this um, kit looks like it's using a lot of stem stitches. So um, it's a great way to practice it. I mean, I haven't done a stem stitch in so long. I can't remember the last time I did one, to be honest. So I'm just uh, prepping my um, thread here. And you, you can use a chart to kind of help you with needle placement. So for this stitch we are using four strands of thread and it's white and when I use uh, even numbers I like to double over my thread so I'm not threading four separate strands into my needle because that's that's difficult to do. So I use two strands and I double it over to make four and I knot the ends accordingly. So right now I'm just using the um, extra thread holders that I have and I'm just going to mark them just for purpose sake even though I know this is white <laughs> but this is how I uh, organize all of my threads that I'm using currently and I just happen to put the color number on there too just in case because you never know I have run out of threads in in kits before so it's good to have the reference number and the color so I'm just, uh, the only, okay, so the only bad thing about the pre-sorted thread is they do have a tiny bit of glue on top, which depending on the kit, sometimes the glue just comes right off and it's no problem, um, but sometimes I have to take scissors and snip it off because the glue just will not come off. So that's really the only downside, but I do love that the, they pre-sort all of the thread for you, so there's really no guesswork and I love that. I've had kits where you're just like, okay, um, light, tan, and e-crew look exactly the same. <laughs> I've had to pull up like a Google image of each color to kind of gauge. Or, um, you know, like e-crew will have two strands, wh whereas light, tan will have one strand, which will be a little bit easier to tell them apart. But yeah, <laughs> that can be a pain in the butt sometimes. So this is the stem stitch, and I come up the same as I do a regular outline stitch, but instead of going on top, so usually I put the thread on top, I'm not this time, I'm going on the bottom, and we are um, stitching from the top to bottom instead of bottom to top. Does that make sense? Anyway, um, if you've ever done an applique stitch, you'll know what I mean. So this is the stem stitch. And I had to go slow here because, because you know, my autopilot wanted to do an outline stitch. But this is the opposite of an outline stitch. Which I think it turned out pretty well. So I, mean, I like the... Um, the boldness of how many strands we're working with here. So there is no no doubt of the name. <laughs> so, um, notice how the tissue paper is staying put and it's not tearing. So if you use newer tissue paper, then it'll be um, a lot easier to work with than if you're using really, really old tissue paper. Um, if you have tissue paper that's been lying around for years and years and years, it may rip more. Just just warning you. Newer tissue paper will be better. So I would just go out to like your local store. They're usually, you can get it in the gift section and they're like 99 cents most of the time. So, and I just use white just so I can see easy. Um, if you have other colors, it's fine too. It doesn't really matter, honestly. But since I'm using white to make the name, then it just makes more sense to use white in general. So, all right. So here's me tearing all of this tissue paper off. Um, go slow. Make sure you don't rip any stitches. Especially if you're new to stitching, sometimes your stitches may not be even and sometimes your stitches may be loose. So just go really slow and make sure that you're going um, 
with the stitch and not against it because um, again you may pull stitches that you accidentally didn't want to pull so um, I'm just gonna take my tweezers and get the smaller pieces and they will come off fairly easy see how easy that was so easy when I started making these I used to use just lined paper and sew through the lined paper yeah, that was hard. <laughs> but again, you know, it was a learning curve, right? So tissue paper is my go-to. If you like to use tracing paper, that's cool too. Whatever floats your boat. The next step after you're done with the name, which turned out so cute, is sequins and beads. So um, I'm using a beading needle and I'm using two strands. I always use two strands. I know, I know the instructions only say one, but I always use two because even even sometimes with two strands my thread will break so I just like to have um, a little bit more reinforcement in all of my beads and sequins and I just feel a lot better to have two threads instead of one so I'm just beading and sequining and I will finish that and then I will go on to the next step I would also like to mention that I do double knot in the back of each individual bead, especially when they're spread out like this, when they're back to back, um, like around the border. So I'll show you that in a second. Um, I usually don't double, double knot because they're so close together and it just saves time to just do them one after the other. So when they're spread out like this, I definitely like to do double knots in the back. That way I know it's not going anywhere. And if they're close enough, I won't um, cut them, but, um, I usually like to do an inch. If it's a little over than an inch, then I'll just cut it, re-knot it, and, and do a bead. So it's really, it's really up to you. Honestly, it, it really is because, um, I'm going to, I'm going to line the backing of this so you won't even see the extra threads that, the jump threads. So I'm using, uh, a white sequin and a clear bead on top of it. So come up through the sequin and the bead and then come down through just the sequin. And I'm gonna do the rest of these. Okay, so notice how those are spread out and then the green ones are really, really close to each other. So we're getting um, to the end of this tutorial and I'm just gonna show you how I do them back to back. And then um, in my next video, we will start with Santa's hat. So look forward to that. And um, if you've ever done a dimensions kit, leave a comment down below. I've never done one of these. And so far, I'm liking it a lot. And it's really beginner friendly and um, craft. You know, if, you, if you've never done a craft or you don't know what the heck you're doing, <laughs> this is a great kit to start with. So that's not Busilla. So I thought that was very cool. So when I do uh, sequins and beads close together, I kind of do a variation of the running stitch which is what I'm showing you now. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, subscribe to my channel. And as always, I will see you in my next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.